All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, this is episode 15, the land of chem 2021 research expedition recap, covering the very much anticipated and highly debated red pyramid of Dashur. I am very excited to finally get to making this video and I have tons of important material to cover in today's episode. But before we get started, I just wanted to provide a little bit of background on the development of the theories contained within the Land of Chem book. So I started researching the Egyptian pyramids back in 2012, learning about their history, their construction, the configuration of these structures, and exploring the alternative hypotheses regarding the function of these pyramids. And after my first trip to Egypt in 2017, I spent the past four years of my life researching this theory specifically, which entails the idea that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. And all of the questions and objections that are currently being proposed by you guys, I have been through all of those also. And after excruciatingly meticulous analysis of every detail of this theory, I have still come to the conclusion that this is the most scientifically valid hypothesis regarding the true function of the Egyptian pyramids that exist today. So the universe works in very mysterious ways. And my dad somehow ended up going with my stepmother to see a presentation on the seven principles of hermetic philosophy. And it turns out that the guy giving this presentation had a PhD in chemical engineering. So my dad and Ed talked a little bit after the presentation and they exchanged contact information, which my dad then provided to me so that I could contact Ed and test my theories on somebody that had professional and academic qualifications in the field of chemical engineering. Again, this gentleman has a PhD in chemical engineering and several international and US patents in the field. So this guy knows what he's talking about and has the qualifications to accurately critique this theory. So I contacted Ed and I was very, very nervous, a lot of anticipation uh, regarding those meetings. And I presented him the exact same material that you are seeing here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. And Ed essentially treated me like a grad student that was presenting a dissertation paper. And he scientifically dismantled every single aspect of this theory and had me rebuild it piece by piece from scratch, explaining every single small detail. And after many, many months of meeting and doing these presentations, Ed agreed so much so that he let me put his name in the acknowledgments of my book that this theory was the most scientifically valid and viable theory that he had heard about the Egyptian pyramids and the most comprehensive theory that addressed every single structure and every aspect in terms of their configuration. So again, I have been put through the ringer in regard to all of the aspects, questions, and objections about this theory. And I'm going to be presenting the exact same material that I showed to Ed here on the land of chem so that you guys can make your own decision regarding the validity of the theories that I have presented. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing the Red Pyramid of Dashur, and we're going to be discussing several aspects of this structure. So of course, we're going to talk about the staining in the Red Pyramid and the intense smell of ammonia that is emanating from the final synthesis chamber. We are going to discuss the configuration and components of the structure in regard to their capabilities to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. We're also going to do a quick review of the manufacturing cycle that started with the step pyramid in Dashur, and we're going to begin to build the process as we move through the subsequent videos. So again, I'm really, really excited about today's video. I think that's it for the introduction. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick shout out to Brandon from the Expanding Reality podcast for having me on the show. I recently did an interview with Brandon on his channel regarding the theories and my book. So if you guys want to check that out, again, the name of the podcast and the YouTube channel is Expanding Reality. And in this interview, I presented probably the most comprehensive overview of the development of my theories, where the ideas came from, lots of exclusive pictures from my 2021 research trip to Egypt. We had an absolutely amazing discussion and it was tons of fun doing this interview. So again, just wanted to give him a shout out again, Brandon, thank you so much for having me on the show. Again, the name of the podcast and the name of the YouTube channel is Expanding Reality. And I will put a link down in the description if you guys wanna check that out. I really appreciate it. And again, Brandon, 
thank you so much for having me on the show, brother. All right, everyone, here we go with our exploration of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. I am coming in hot today, and we have tons of material to cover in today's episode, so just buckle your seatbelts, and we will get right to it. So this picture of the Red Pyramid was taken from my 2021 research expedition to Egypt. You can see the absolutely immense size of the structure, and here on the north face of the pyramid is the opening to the descending shaft, the northern pump shaft, that leads down into your three reaction chambers in side of the structure. Now here in this picture, this is the eastern side of the Red Pyramid, and you can see here a replica of the capstone or pyramidion that once sat on top of this structure. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the original capstone. This is just a replica, and you can see here that they have random pieces of stone just stuck into this concrete mold. This is strictly for tourism and photography purposes. This is not an original piece of stone, but I just wanted to point that out. It is here on the eastern side of the structure. And in the distance, you can see the bent pyramid of Dashur. And I just want to mention this structure briefly because we're going to be taking a quick preview of its internal components as those are applicable to our discussion today. All right, next up here, we have the etymology of the word ammonia. So before we want proceed in today's episode, I wanted to provide some historical and archaeological evidence that the origins of ammonia are directly connected to ancient Egypt. So the original word for the name ammonia is actually sal ammoniac, and this word literally means salt of ammon. So anyone that's familiar with the dynastic Egyptian religion and the deities of ancient Egypt will immediately recognize the deity ammon. So the word ammon literally means invisible or hidden. So there is a very interesting esoteric connection between ammonia gas, the definition for the word ammon, the name of this Egyptian deity, and the production of this chemical. So we know, according to the historical and archaeological record, that, again, the origins of ammonia are directly connected to ancient Egypt, and the ancient Egyptians were producing this chemical on a small scale. So ammonia was originally produced in ancient Egypt, derived from the dung of camels. And it is my belief that any ancient civilization that was sophisticated enough to build structures like the Egyptian pyramids, if they had the knowledge to produce these chemicals on a small scale, they would have also sought to implement this knowledge on a large scale for the production of chemicals on an industrial scale. And that is my theory that the ancient Egyptian pyramids are designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. So again, I just wanted to provide some historical and archeological evidence that ammonia is directly connected to ancient Egypt. And the etymology of this word, again, is connected to the deity Ammon. So very interesting esoteric interpretation of the name of that deity as connected to the production of the chemical ammonia. All right, next up, this is just a quick picture of the interior chamber. Uh, this is actually the primary steam reformer inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So I want to point out two things here in this image. So there are two very distinct types of staining inside of the Red Pyramid. So you can see here in the lower portion of the chamber, there is some red drip staining all over the lower section of this chamber. And in the upper vault of this primary steam reformer, you can see this very dark nebulous staining here in the upper portion of this chamber. So I will be discussing both types of staining pattern in today's episode. So just keep that in mind as we proceed with the video. All right, so next up here, this is from the website Total Wildlife Control on some signs for bat populations. So I just wanna mention that bat urine typically is going to look like a splash of milk, leaving a white, barely visible residue. And of course, the urine from bats and the urine from any animal will eventually smell like ammonia. But I just wanted to point out that again, the urine from bats is going to be white, milky, leaving a barely visible residue. So just keep that in mind again as we proceed with today's episode. All right, so a quick review of Mastaba 17 at the Pyramid of My Doom in the Fayum Oasis. So I mentioned this in the previous video, and all of you have seen the video of Yusuf and I going in and out of this structure. So you clearly see that there are bats inside of this structure. So we went inside Mastaba 17 in 2020 
and in 2021. So these bats have been in this structure for at least two years, and it was confirmed by our guides and the caretakers of the site that there have always been bats inside of this structure. However, you will notice that there is not a single red drip stain anywhere inside of this chamber, nor is there any dark nebulous staining inside the upper portion of this chamber. So again, you can see here a couple pictures of the bats, no drip staining whatsoever inside of this chamber. And I will go ahead and mention that there is absolutely zero smell of ammonia inside of this chamber. So that being said, even with the minimal amount of airflow inside of this chamber, and again, in my previous videos, you can see how difficult it is to get in and out of this chamber. And there is literally no airflow inside this chamber, but you can clearly see here on the lid of this container that there is bat feces all inside this chamber. And that's what these little black droppings are. And again, there's bat poop all over this chamber. So these animals clearly have been inside of this chamber long enough for them to urinate and defecate all over the inside of the chamber. But again, there is zero drip staining. There is zero dark nebulous staining, and there is zero smell of ammonia. Now, again, even with the limited amount of airflow inside this chamber, there is significant enough airflow to completely dissipate any smell of ammonia that would have resulted from bat urine. So again, just keep that in mind as we proceed with the remainder of today's episode. All right, and this is an amazing picture. This is actually from my 2020 research expedition to Egypt, and it had just rained in Dashur that day, and you can see this from this spectacular picture. So we're gonna be talking a little bit in the next few slides about the bent pyramid of Dashur and some of the unusual staining that is found inside that structure, because there have also been bats inside of the bent pyramid up until 2020, 2021, when that structure was reopened to the public. So this picture is taken from the satellite pyramid of the Bent Pyramid. And you will notice that there are some very unusual staining patterns inside of this structure as well. You can see the dark staining that has accumulated on the bottom of each one of these tiers. Now, after some research, I have come to the conclusion that this type of staining could have been produced by bats. However, you will notice that there are zero bats inside of this chamber now, and there is absolutely no smell of ammonia whatsoever inside of the satellite pyramid of the Bent Pyramid of Dashur. But again, very, very unusual staining pattern. I did some research in these accumulations of the crystalline deposits that you can see here on the right. This is compatible with what you see from bat urine. So again, this staining pattern could be caused by bats, but again, zero smell of ammonia. There is no bat feces inside of this structure, and there are zero bats inside of this structure, at least in 2020 and 2021, when I personally went inside of this structure. All right, these next couple of pictures are from inside of the Bent Pyramid, and these were taken from the Asita Project website from their 2012 tour inside of the Bent Pyramid. Now, these researchers actually toured Egypt with our guide Yusuf, the same guy that I've been touring uh, with in Egypt. And they went inside of this structure many years prior to its official reopening to the public. So again, these images are from 2012. And you can clearly see that there is a very large colony of bats that were living inside of the Bent Pyramid. You can see all the bats here in the upper portion of the vault. On this picture here in the bottom left, you can see that they are covering the walls inside of the chamber. And just note the sporadic placement of these bats as they're hanging on the walls inside of this chamber. I will get to that in just a moment. And you can also clearly see that there is plenty of bat, bat feces all over the floor of this chamber. So again, this was taken in 2012. However, at the official reopening of this structure to the public, they went in and exterminated all of the bats inside of the structure. Now, talking to our guides, they utilized a chemical that is a pepper-based chemical to eliminate the bats from inside the structure. So when we went in in 2020, there were a minimal amount of bats. We saw maybe a small handful, 10 or 12 bats inside the structure total. There was absolutely zero smell of ammonia inside of this structure. And you can clearly see that there is no red drip staining whatsoever inside of these chambers. Again, you can see these dark pools of staining that are here inside this chamber and after again some research i do believe that this type of staining could have been produced by the bats but again zero smell of ammonia 
zero red drip staining. And I will say that it does not smell good inside the bent pyramid of Dashur. So when we went in in 2020, it smelled like dead rodents and exactly what you would expect to smell inside a cave filled with bats. However, again, zero smell of ammonia. And when we went in in 2021, there are almost zero bats inside of this structure today. So these pictures were taken from my 2021 research expedition to Egypt. Again, there are zero bats inside of this structure. You can clearly see that there are some accumulated staining, which that certainly could have been produced by the bats. But again, there is zero smell of ammonia inside of this chamber. So let's say in 2012, there were bats inside of the chamber. We clearly know that as evidenced by the pictures from the Acida project. So now we go back in in 2020 and 2021. So there has been at least eight or nine years where there have been minimal bats inside of this structure. So if the smell inside of this chamber were produced by bats, it has had plenty of time to completely dissipate from inside of that structure. So let's say they exterminated the bats in 2019. We go in in 2020. There's zero smell of ammonia in 2020. We go in in 2021, there is still zero smell of ammonia inside of this structure. And there's only been a couple of years where there haven't been any bats inside of this pyramid. So very unusual that there were bats in here a couple of years ago, zero smell of ammonia today. Same thing with Mastaba 17. There are plenty of bats inside there today and zero smell of ammonia inside of that structure. However, you will notice again in this picture, that there is plenty of bat feces inside of the bent pyramid and all these little black dots that you can see all over the floor. Again, that is bat feces. Again, clear evidence that there have been bat colony inside of this structure for many, many years. However, zero red drip staining, zero dark nebula staining, similar to what we see in the red pyramid, and zero smell of ammonia inside of this chamber today. All right, so these pictures are taken from the housing of the stone valve in the western pump shaft of the bent pyramid. And again, you can see this accumulated staining, which after some research, I've come to the conclusion that this type of staining could be produced by bats. If you look into um, signs of bat colonies inside homes and things like that, you do see similar staining patterns to what we see here in the housing for this stone valve. Again, we do know for sure that there were bats inside the red pyramid. There is tons of bat feces inside of this structure. And again, there are staining patterns within the bent pyramid that do indicate that there are bats inside of this structure. However, you stick your head into this little stone valve housing and there is zero smell of ammonia whatsoever inside of this portion of the structure as well. All right, so these pictures are from the upper and lower separation chambers inside of the bent pyramid. Again, I just wanted to preview the inside of these chambers because you can look and clearly see that there is zero red drip staining. There's actually no staining whatsoever inside of this, this chambers. However, we know for sure that there was a massive colony of bats inside of this structure within the past 10 years. Again, zero smell of ammonia inside of the bent pyramid. All right, so now moving from the bent pyramid into the red pyramid of Dashur. So this is how you get into the structure today. Again, you take this modern staircase up the northern face of the structure into the opening that now descends into your primary reaction chambers. And here on the right was just a right place, right time. One of my favorite pictures from my 2021 research expedition to Egypt. So moving right along. And a quick review of the configuration of the red pyramid before we journey inside of this structure so you can see here on the right the reservoir surrounding the pyramid which would have been filled with water we have here on the eastern side of the structure your reservoir intake valve which was utilized to move water from the reservoir into the internal chambers to facilitate chemical reactions here on the northern side of the pyramid this is your northern pump shaft and this pump shaft was utilized to compress the water inside of the system to raise the water level again to facilitate the chemical reactions and you can see here on the left this first chamber is your primary steam reformer second chamber is your secondary air reformer and the third chamber in the sequence is the final synthesis chamber and this chamber ladies and gentlemen is exactly where the smell of ammonia is emanating from. They're All right, and these pictures are just a couple of images from the northern pump shaft of the Red Pyramid. And you can see here that there is an airline, an air hose, 
leading from the outside of this structure into the internal chambers. And this air hose actually goes all the way into the final synthesis chamber. So they are actively trying to introduce air into this structure and remove the smell of ammonia from inside of this pyramid. So again, that's very unusual. You do not see this air hose inside of the bent pyramid. Um, very unusual, again, that they're actively trying to introduce more air into the chamber to try to remove that smell of ammonia. However, the reason I wanted to show these images, there were several requests to provide documentation of the inside of the northern pump shaft for any evidence of there being a stone block that moved up and down this pump shaft. Well, I can clearly show you that again, the inside of these pump shafts are in a very deteriorated condition. And this is basically the same in every structure in Egypt. These Northern pump shafts are partially destroyed. It's very difficult to say what caused this deterioration. However, I will say, that if there was a stone block moving up and down this pump shaft, the most deteriorated section of this pump shaft would be the floor, which is conveniently covered by this stone walkway. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that there are absolutely zero stairs leading down into the primary reaction chambers of these structures. So again, this is a modern installation that is utilized to facilitate people's entrance into the structure. When this thing was originally built, this was a completely squared off shaft system. There were zero stairs leading into this structure, and that's going to be relevant in my next video coming up here soon. But again, just a couple of quick pictures showing that northern pump shaft and the deteriorated condition of this section of the structure. All right, next up, this is a photo from inside the primary steam reformer of the Red Pyramid. And again, I'm going to point out a couple of things here in this image, which we will discuss in more detail in just a moment. So again, you can see here leading into the structure is that air shaft coming down the pump shaft, and it actually continues through this wooden box into your final synthesis chamber. As I mentioned before, you can see the very dark nebulous staining in the upper portion of the chamber and the red drip staining that covers the lower section of the chamber. And I'm also going to discuss this component here, which I believe to be the inlet shaft, which was utilized to introduce the methane gas into this structure. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the nebulous staining in the upper portion of this chamber. So it has also been proposed that this dark nebulous staining is a result of torches being used inside of this structure. Well, I can absolutely say that is false. There is zero carbon soot deposits in this upper portion of the vault. And if this was caused by soot, you would also expect there to be dark staining on the underside of the tiers, which you can see that there is no carbon soot staining whatsoever on the lower side of these tiers. Also, if you were using torches inside of this structure, and this entire upper vault section was completely filled with smoke, you would very quickly find yourself dead from carbon monoxide poisoning, and any explorer that went inside of this structure would have been knowledgeable enough not to bring burning torches inside of these confined areas. Also, if this was caused by soot, there would not be a precise delineation of the staining pattern at exactly the third tier in the chamber in both the primary and secondary uh, reaction chambers within this structure. So again, this, this upper staining in the upper portion of the chamber is absolutely not caused by torches. Again, one more thing I want to point out, this red drip staining in the lower portion of the chamber. So there is red drip staining covering the primary steam reformer and also the secondary air reformer, which again is very unusual. This is not compatible with what we saw in Mastaba 17, where there are currently bats. This type of staining is not compatible with what we saw in the bent pyramid, where we know for sure a large colony of bats inhabited that structure within the past decade. And again, I'm going to get to this component here in the next couple of slides. So this is just a close up picture of that primary steam reformer. Again, you can see the wooden box that hides the air, um, the air pipe leading into the final synthesis chamber. And again, you can clearly see that red drip staining that covers the walls of this chamber. So I will point out in this image, this massive piece of stone here that was utilized in the construction of this chamber. And you will see this stone is in the exact same configuration in the Southern and Northern walls of both the primary steam reformer and the secondary air reformer. And you will notice that there is a pressure crack right here in this stone. And you will notice that there are pressure cracks in the exact same position on the 
southern wall of this chamber in this exact same stone. Now, this is the largest stone that was utilized in the construction of this chamber. And this stone was placed very, very intentionally in this configuration because there is moving water and moving gases inside of this chamber, particularly between the first and second chamber. So they used the largest stone that was utilized in the construction for this section of the chamber because of the pressure differentials that were created in the moving fluids from chamber to ch chamber one to chamber two. And I'll show that here also in just a moment. So one of the reasons that I believe that this hole is actually an inlet shaft leading into this chamber, and I do believe that this is the inlet shaft delivered methane into this chamber, because if you look at the configuration of this shaft termination, it is located in the exact same spot that we find the northern air shaft inside the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid. So take a look at this here. You can see the line at the top of this stone, and this shaft termination is configured exactly at the bottom of this line. And this line also matches the top of the shaft leading into the chamber. So you can very clearly see that there is an alignment between this shaft termination and the top of this shaft here leading into the chamber. So let's just take a look at the configuration of the termination of the air shaft here in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. So again, you can see this exact same configuration utilized here. This is the top of the line of stone. This is the termination of the air shaft. And this is the top of the shaft that leads into the antechamber prior to reaching the king's chamber inside of the Great Pyramid. So again, this is just a close-up of that termination of the shaft that was utilized to deliver methane into the primary steam reform. And again, you can also see that there's a pressure crack leading up from this shaft termination. And you can see the pressure crack here on the right side of this massive piece of stone that is here at the bottom of the northern pump shaft. Now, unfortunately, this shaft termination has been completely filled with modern concrete, so there's no way to determine what is actually inside of here. But again, that evidence that I showed from the King's Chamber in the configuration of this air shaft is one of the reasons that I believe that this is the methane shaft used to deliver methane into the primary steam reformer. This is just another quick close-up showing the configuration of that northern air shaft inside of the king's chamber. And again, this is the exact same configuration that we find inside the primary steam reformer of the Red Pyramid. And here's just a couple other quick, quick close-up pictures of that um, termination of that shaft. And you can also see the red drip staining very closely here inside of the primary steam reformer. All right, this picture is showing the southern wall of the primary steam reformer. And here is your connecting shaft that leads from your first chamber into the second chamber. And I'll just point this out again, this large stone here that was utilized in the construction of this chamber. And you can see here that there is a very large pressure crack that leads up. And this is in the exact same place as the pressure crack on the northern wall of the primary steam reformer. Again, I believe that these cracks are a result of the changes in pressure and the fluid dynamics from the moving water and the moving gases that move from the primary steam reformer into the secondary air reformer. And this large stone was placed here intentionally to mitigate any damage that was caused inside the structure by these pressure differentials and the fluid dynamics. And here is an exceptional original photo taken from inside the primary steam reformer. And you can very clearly see that there are multiple different types of staining pattern inside of this chamber. As I mentioned before, the dark staining in the upper, the drip staining on the lower portion of the chamber. And there's also this very unusual wavy staining in the lower portion of the chamber. So again, very unusual anomalous details inside of the red pier. One thing you do not see in this picture, however, is a single bat not one in this picture. And I have scoured the internet for all of the old pictures from inside of the Red Pyramid, and not a single one of these has a bat in any image. So just keep that in mind in our discussion of the smell of ammonia and the staining inside of these chambers. All right, here's a couple other quick close-up pictures showing the staining in the upper vault of the primary steam reformer. Again, you'll notice that this staining pattern starts precisely 
at the bottom of the third tier inside of this chamber. So again, if this was caused by bats, I find it very unusual that they just decided to accumulate right here at the very bottom of this third tier. And this staining pattern is the exact same position in this chamber as it is in the secondary air reformer. So very anomalous staining pattern found in the upper vault of these chambers. All right, so again, just a throwback to Mastaba 17 so that we can compare what we see inside of this chamber in comparison to what we see inside the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. So again, there is no dark staining whatsoever inside the upper portion of this chamber. There is not a single red drip stain anywhere inside of this chamber, and there is no red accumulated staining like we see inside of the Bent Pyramid. So there's something very unusual about the staining inside of these structures. Again, the bats have been inside of Mastaba 17 for at least two years, according to our guides, most likely decades. There has been plenty of time for them to urinate and defecate inside of this chamber. We saw clear proof that there was bat feces inside of this chamber. How again, there is zero drip staining inside of Mastaba 17. So very anomalous comparison between this structure where there is currently bats and inside of the Red Pyramid where there haven't been bats for probably the past several decades. All right, this photo is taken from inside the secondary air reformer, the second chamber of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. Again, you can see this massive stone that was placed in the exact same configuration as in the previous chamber, and the pressure crack here is in exactly the same place. Again, I believe that this is an indication of the fluid dynamics and pressure differentials between these first two chambers, and this stone was selected intentionally to mitigate any potential damage inside of this structure. Now, in the next couple of pictures, I'm going to show some close-ups of the drip staining found inside of this chamber. So you can see here on the left, this red drip staining that covers the walls inside of these chambers. Now, you will notice that there is a very linear pattern to the staining inside of these chambers. So you can see here the line of the red drip staining goes all the way across the line of this stone. Similar here in the right side picture, this red drip staining is about two inches from the crack between these two stones. So now, when we were in here in 2021, Yusuf and I thoroughly discussed these staining patterns, and I came up with the idea that the bats could have been attaching themselves to the wall here at the crack in the stone, and then they were urinating on the walls as they were lined up here in this position. So that's certainly one explanation for this linear staining pattern. However, that is not compatible with what we see in Mastaba 17 or within the Bent Pyramid. We saw that there is a very sporadic pattern for the way these bats organize themselves on the walls. They are not hanging in a straight line all the way across these cracks, nor do they need the crack to attach to the wall. You saw in Mastaba 17, they are not affixed to the cracks in the walls. They are very randomly placed across the wall itself. So again, this is a very anomalous staining pattern inside of the Red Pyramid. Could this red drip staining have been caused by bats? Sure, it's possible. However, there are zero bats inside of this structure, and this staining pattern is not compatible whatsoever with the other two structures where we know for sure there have been large colonies of bats. All right, this is an awesome picture showing the upper vault of the secondary aeroformer. And again, you can very clearly see that there is a dark, nebulous staining pattern that has permeated the stone in the upper portion of this chamber. And again, you can very clearly see on this right image that there is zero accumulated soot. There are no carbon deposits whatsoever in this upper vault. So this is definitely not caused by torches and from soot. This also doesn't look like anything that we saw in Mastaba 17 or in the Bent Pyramid. You can see that there is some drip staining here. Again, it's in a very linear pattern directly below the bottom of each tier. Again, this certainly could have been caused by bats, but again, that is not what we see in Mastaba 17. We know that bat urine is not black, it is not brown, it is not red, it is clear or milky white at best as shown at the very beginning of this video. So again, very unusual staining inside of this chamber, which I believe is an indication of the high temperature, high pressure chemical reactions that were occurring in the upper portion of the vault. Now the drip staining in the lower portion of the chamber, my theory does not address that red drip staining, nor should it, because that's not necessarily an indication of any chemical reactions. 
All right, here's a couple of images showing the upper vault of the secondary aeroformer. And you can see here, this is a great image that was taken prior to the construction of the wooden staircase that now covers up the southern wall of this secondary aeroformer. So you can see here that this southern wall is completely covered in that dark nebulous staining. And here today, they've constructed this wooden staircase that now completely conveniently covers up that wall. And you can see here the air pipe that's delivering air or removing air from that final synthesis chamber. Again, they are actively trying to aerate the inside of that final synthesis chamber to eliminate that smell of ammonia. However, I went into the Red Pyramid for my first time in 2017. I went back in 2020 and again in 2021. And I will tell you that the smell of ammonia inside that final synthesis chamber is as strong today as it was in 2017. So regardless of the cause of that smell of ammonia, whether it was from ancient ammonia production inside of that chamber, or if it was caused by bats, the smell of ammonia should have had plenty of time to dissipate by now because there are zero bats inside of this chamber today. You can see here on this picture on the left, there are zero bats inside of this chamber. And from my best estimate, I would guess that this picture was taken in the 1960s or 1970s. So we're talking about approximately 40 to 50 years that there have been zero bats inside of this chamber. And to produce the smell of ammonia that that emanates from that final synthesis chamber, you would have to have an absolutely immense colony of bats inside of this structure. So where are the bats? If you can find one picture of the red pyramid that shows a huge colony of bats, I will be all ears and I would love to see it because I've scoured the internet and I have not found a single image that shows a huge colony of bats living inside of the red pyramid. Again, just a throwback to Mastaba 17 so we can compare the difference between a structure that currently has bats. Again, zero drip staining, no dark nebulous staining. There is tons of bat feces inside of this structure and zero smell of ammonia. Again, the smell of ammonia dissipates very quickly if there's any sort of moving airflow. All I can say is that inside of the red pyramid, this smell is as intense as it has been for the past four years. And I know personally that other individuals have been inside of this structure within the past 20 years or in the past decade. The smell of ammonia is incredibly intense and they haven't reported seeing any bats inside of this structure as well. So again, where is this massive colony of bats that are inhabiting this structure? How long ago were they inside of this structure? And if these bats were in here 50 years ago, there should have been plenty of time for that smell of ammonia, if it was produced by bat urine, to completely dissipate from inside of this structure. So in this image, you can see the connecting shaft that leads from the upper vault of the secondary air reformer through to your final synthesis chamber. And here is that air hose, again, attempting to remove that smell of ammonia from the final synthesis chamber. So this image is from inside the pit of the final synthesis chamber. And this is a hole that someone attempted to excavate out of this final synthesis chamber. And it appears to me that this has actually been filled in with modern concrete here. But there have been excavations inside of this pit, which indicate there was something of interest inside of this final synthesis chamber. And I believe that they were actually in search of the um, extraction shaft that was utilized to remove the ammonia solution after it was produced from inside of this chamber. So here's just a couple of quick pictures of that final synthesis chamber. And one thing that you will notice inside of this chamber. So you can see here, there is a very clear delineation of the staining pattern inside of this final synthesis chamber. It st starts precisely here at the bottom of this black marker stone. And you can see here the dark nebulous staining that begins in the upper portion of the chamber. And there is no staining on this lower section because that area would have been filled with water. Now, in the pit itself of the final synthesis chamber, just take a look around and see if you see any bat feces in here. There is not a single piece of bat shit inside of this final synthesis chamber. So again, Inside of Mastaba 17, there's been bats inside there for the past two years. There's plenty of bat feces inside of that structure. In the Bent Pyramid, there were bats inside there in 2012. 
There were some bats still inside there in 2020, but those have since been completely eradicated from inside of the structure. There is tons of bat feces still inside of the bent pyramid. They are not going in and cleaning up the bat feces after the bats are gone. So just take a look inside the final synthesis chamber in the pit here. Where is all the bat feces? If there was a massive colony of bats inside of this final synthesis chamber, you would expect to see tons and tons of bat feces inside of this pit. However, there is not a single bit of it inside of this chamber. Also, this is again, just a quick close up of the floor of that pit to show you that there is zero bat feces down inside this pit. And again, you can see this air hose here that is attempting to remove or alleviate the smell of ammonia from inside of this chamber. You will also notice that inside of the final synthesis chamber, there is zero red drip staining inside of this chamber. You can see here on the left, there is definitely that dark nebulous staining in the upper portion of the vault. And there is some dark staining that covers the walls of the upper portion of this chamber. However, you can very clearly see that there is zero drip staining. Now, if that red drip staining inside the previous chambers was caused by bat urine, where are the drip stainings inside of this chamber? Because this chamber is where the smell is coming from. So again, if the smell of ammonia inside of this chamber were caused by bat urine, you would expect to see tons of urine drip staining inside of this chamber. However, that is absolutely not the case. There is zero red drip staining. There is zero bat feces, but there is an overwhelming and intense smell of ammonia inside of this chamber that has existed for at least the past four years. Again, I've had individuals that have gone in there way before I went inside this structure, have reported seeing zero bats, and again, an intense smell of ammonia that has persisted for the past several decades. So you can see here, this is just a picture of the upper vault of the final synthesis chamber. There is zero red drip staining. There is definitely the dark nebulous staining in the upper portion of the chamber, which is to be expected based on my hypothesis regarding the operation of this structure. But again, if that red drip staining was caused by bat urine, you would expect there to be tons of bat urine stains inside of this chamber because this is the chamber where the smell is coming from. But that is absolutely not the case of what we find inside of this final synthesis chamber. And just a couple of other pictures showing the opposite wall of the final synthesis chamber. Again, you do see some of this brownish red staining, um, but again, none of that red drip staining that you saw in the previous chambers. And again, there is absolutely no bat feces inside of the pit of this chamber, which you would certainly expect if there was a massive colony of bats living inside of this chamber. Now I will say that the smell of ammonia inside of this structure is pure chemical ammonia. It is not urine. These two things have a very distinct smell. I know what urine smells like and I know what ammonia smells like. The smell inside of this chamber is pure chemical ammonia. And again, there is no indication whatsoever that there have been bats inside of this structure for the past several decades. And again, over those past 10 years, there should have been plenty of time for the smell of ammonia to dissipate from inside of this chamber, regardless of what the cause was. All I can tell you is that the smell still persists today and it is coming from the pit inside of this chamber. Now, during our 2017 visit, our guide Yusuf snuck in a little piece of incredible wisdom. And he mentioned that the smell of ammonia was coming from the alchemy underneath the structure. So again, it may not even be from the pit or the final synthesis chamber itself. There may be something underneath the structure that is yet to be discovered. So again, very unusual staining patterns inside of the red pyramid, not compatible with anything that we saw on Mastaba 17 or the bent pyramid. There haven't been bats inside this structure for at least several decades. So again, what exactly is causing the smell of ammonia inside of this structure? That is up for you to determine. But again, my theory is that the red pyramid of Dashur was utilized to create an ammonia solution, which was utilized for fertilizer. And just a quick review of the chemical manufacturing process that we've been building upon so far here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. So the chemical reaction sequence begins at the step pyramid of Saqqara. And my hypothesis is that the step pyramid of Saqqara was utilized to produce methane gas. So here on the right side of this image, you can see the configuration of a modern biogas digester. So the components 
of these structures com consist of an inlet shaft leading into your primary digestion chamber, and then a displacement shaft, which is utilized to remove the decomposed substrate material after it's done producing methane. So if you look at the original configuration of the step pyramid of Saqqara, that is exactly what you find in this structure. So you can see here the original inlet shaft, the primary digestion chamber itself, and the displacement shaft leading out to the south. Now again, this chamber was designed to produce methane gas from a slurry containing water, agricultural scrap material, and cattle manure. And cattle manure contains essential anaerobic bacteria that digest the agricultural scrap material and produce methane gas that from the original Mastaba platform would have been collected out of the top of the platform, very similar to what you see here on the bottom right with the configuration of this methane biogas digester. So methane gas was being produced inside the step pyramid of Saqqara. That methane gas was then transported via a system of underground shafts to the red pyramid of Dashur. And you can see here in this image from the Latvian scientific mission to Saqqara in 2007, that there are absolutely underground shafts that lead from this structure elsewhere across the western bank of the Nile River. So again, this shaft here on the north is your original inlet shaft leading into the primary digestion chamber. And you can see here that this Latvian scientific mission did discover the displacement shaft leading out to the south, which is not shown in previous diagrams because it had not yet been discovered. So again, keep in mind that when you're assessing the old diagrams of these structures, they are not necessarily accurate to what actually exists inside of these pyramids because they didn't discover this displacement shaft until they did LIDAR scanning of this entire area. So discoveries are continuing in Egypt and there's new stuff being uncovered every day. But again, there is clear evidence of shaft systems that lead away from the step pyramid. And it is through those underground shaft systems that the methane gas was delivered to the red pyramid of Dashur. So again, once that methane gas reaches the Red Pyramid, it was converted inside of this structure into an ammonia solution that was utilized for fertilizer. Again, a quick review of the configuration of the Red Pyramid. You have the reservoir surrounding the outside of the structure, your reservoir intake valve here on the eastern side, your northern pump shaft descends into your three reaction chambers, which are your primary steam reformer, your secondary air reformer, and the final synthesis chamber. So all of the discussion regarding the staining and the smell of ammonia inside of the Red Pyramid, in my opinion, is completely irrelevant because the staining inside of the chamber and the smell inside of the chamber were not there when the structure was originally built. They all came around later, regardless of what the cause was. So to effectively analyze the capabilities of this structure, we have to assess the configuration of the, the chambers themselves and see if they are capable of producing these chemical reactions. So my hypothesis is that these chambers were meticulously engineered with progressively reduced volume towards the upper vault of the chamber. And if you consult your ideal gas laws, you will find that if you reduce the volume of a gas, you are going to increase its temperature and pressure. And that is exactly the mechanism of operation that was utilized here inside of the Red Pyramid to facilitate these chemical reactions. Now, I'm not gonna go into great detail in this video describing those mechanisms of action, and I'm actually gonna put in uh, the animation that I've shown in previously previous videos so you can see exactly how this structure operates. And if you want a full explanation of all the meticulous details, I highly recommend you check out episode 11 here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. But nonetheless, this is your primary steam reformer, this is your secondary air reformer, and this is your final th synthesis chamber where that ammonia solution was being produced. Now, you can see here, again, the staining pattern in the upper vault of these chambers is an indication of the high temperature, high pressure reactions that were occurring in the upper vault. You are compressing water and soluble gases into the upper portion of these vaults to facilitate chemical reactions. So if that were the case, you would expect there to be some indication of these chemical reactions occurring inside of these chambers, which is exactly what we see inside of the Red Pyramid. So a quick review of the chemical reaction sequence. So in the first chamber, you are converting methane and water 
into hydrogen and carbon monoxide. That hydrogen and carbon monoxide then flow through the connecting shaft. Again, I mentioned in the previous slides that there are fluid dynamics, moving fluids, and a pressure differential between these two chambers. So again, that is why that massive stone was utilized here in this position, here in this position, and here in this position to mitigate any damage that was created by those moving fluids and the pressure differential between these two chambers. And you can clearly see that there's a pressure crack in each one of these stones in the exact same place in each of these chambers. So nonetheless, methane and water react to produce hydrogen and carbon monoxide here in your primary steam reformer. Those gases flow through the connecting shaft into the secondary air reformer where air is then introduced into the chamber. So you have your hydrogen and carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen and nitrogen from the air to produce hydrogen, nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. Now that water and carbon dioxide are both soluble in water. Those will dissolve back into the water here in this chamber. And then your hydrogen and nitrogen are pushed through the connecting shaft into your final synthesis chamber. Now, the reaction sequence in the primary and secondary reformers are repeated over and over again until your final synthesis chamber is completely filled with nitrogen and hydrogen. At that point, the water level is compressed in the system, pushing the nitrogen and hydrogen gases into the upper vault of the prime final synthesis chamber, where those two gases react to produce ammonia gas. Now that ammonia gas is highly sol soluble in water and will rapidly dissolve into the water in the chamber, producing an ammonia solution. That ammonia solution is then drained out of your final synthesis chamber and utilized either to produce solid ammonium carb bicarbonate within the bent pyramid or extracted directly for miscellaneous other agricultural or industrial purposes. So that is a review of the chemical reaction sequence inside of the red pyramid and i will go ahead and put in that animation coming up here so you can see exactly how this structure operated All right, and this is one of the my favorite images that I discovered when I started researching the connection between ammonia and our modern industrial methodology for the production of this chemical on an industrial scale. So you will notice, and again, this is a picture of the first apparatus that was designed to produce ammonia during the Industrial Revolution. So let's just do a quick review of the configuration of this apparatus. So you see a shaft introducing methane into this primary steam reformer. This primary steam reformer is connected through a shaft system in the reformer, and the chemical reactions occurring inside of this apparatus are exactly what I have described in the previous slides. So methane is introduced into this chamber. It is reacted with steam that creates hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Your hydrogen and carbon monoxide flow into your secondary air reformer where oxygen and nitrogen are introduced to create hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water. The carbon dioxide and water are removed from this chamber and then they are moved through another connecting shaft into your final synthesis chamber where that ammonia solution is produced. So again, chamber one, connecting shaft, chamber two, connecting shaft, and the final synthesis chamber is elevated above the previous two chambers. So just keep that configuration in mind when we move to the subsequent slide. All right, so again, we have here, the configuration of this modern apparatus to produce ammonia. And we have here the configuration of the red pyramid of Dashur. So again, shaft leading into the chamber, primary steam reformer, 
Here on the right, you have a shaft leading into the chamber, your primary steam reformer. Connecting shaft from your primary steam reformer into your secondary air reformer. That is exactly what we see here, the connecting shaft system leading into the secondary air reformer. And again, that final synthesis chamber being elevated above the previous two. Now, the physics and the chemistry utilized within these metal containers is exactly the same as what was utilized here in the Red Pyramid of Dashur. However, in the modern industrial process, we are using much higher temperature and pressures, and you're also using catalysts to facilitate the final chemical reaction process and make this reaction occur more efficiently. Now, I have never implied that the reactions inside of the Red Pyramid are as efficient as what we have today. However, it is utilizing the exact same methodology and the exact same physics to produce these chemical reactions. So again, may not have been happening as fast or as efficiently as we have today. The point is that the Red Pyramid and the configuration of this structure is capable of producing these gases. And this is a plausible hypothesis for the function of this structure. All right, everyone, just a reminder to definitely check out my appearance on the Expanding Reality podcast. Huge thank you to Brandon for having me on the show. We had an awesome time. And during our conversation, I presented probably the most comprehensive overview of my theory that I have done to date. And of course, during our discussion, a lot of very interesting information came up that I haven't talked about here on the channel. So definitely check out the episode. I will leave a link in the video description below. Again, that's the Expanding Reality Podcast. And I look forward to doing that show again in the near future. And for anyone that's interested, of course, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available on my website, which is thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab a t-shirt. Either way, it helps to support the channel, and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much in advance. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's episode. This was episode 15, the Land of Chem 2021 Research Expedition Recap, part three, covering the Red Pyramid of Dashur. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, so the next video is gonna be a bit of a departure from the Research Expedition Recap. I have a really exciting video idea that you guys are really gonna enjoy, so stay tuned. Uh, quick thank you to all of the new subscribers here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel. <clears throat> if you like the video, definitely leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, definitely leave, leave a comment in the comment section below. I really enjoy interacting with everyone and hearing what you think about this material. So thank you all so much for tuning in and uh, we will see you next time.